Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Today uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be learning how to make uh, TNT or something very similar to TNT that uses entities and um, you know uh, as basically prime TNT so I'll have that uh, projectile explosion thing. Now there is some issues with um, how blocks are uh, basically um, destroy the other blocks and stuff like that where the entity destroys the blocks. Uh, sometimes you get ghost blocks which uh, are there still but technically display as nothing there so there are some issues I have let um, the developer know about uh, some of these so uh, hopefully there will be some fixes in the future. Um, outside of that uh, what you're going to need is you're going to need a custom um, texture for a block model entity uh, you can go and open up um, uh, block bench or something like that and just uh, texture a simple square cube and um, display that as uh, your actual entity model once you have that uh, you can import a java model you need to export it as dot java and then you can import the um, java model that you made it with block bench you're also going to need uh, three textures uh, for your uh, TNT. Uh, you're going to need your bottom, your side, and your top. So once you have all that imported, you can move on to going to global events. Uh, we're going to actually need a timer, so if you haven't watched that tutorial, I'll link down to it in the, uh, the description. Uh, so basically what's going on right here is we're basically going with a global timer to, or uh, yeah, a global timer to global session. It's a number variable, a uh, variable type, and we're setting it to zero. This basically will always start at zero. Uh, in the future, you might be able to um, use world or map as well. So we're going to be using this as a countdown timer in our mod. So to understand how basically how TNT actually works is it the, the original block, the safe state one, is a actual solid block. However, prime TNT is an entity itself. So when it gets to prime TNT, which is the entity, it will remove the block and update the, um, or basically spawn a prime TNT. So how we do that is we need to go to and create a block. Um, at any point, you can pause the video and see the settings. Um, we're just going to use a basic block uh, model for our TNT. We don't need any custom models or anything like that. Uh, we want it on solid. All these uh, dimensions are perfectly fine. Uh, we want to name our our uh, display name for our um, TNT. Now I've set these settings here um, for the TNT, but you might want to adjust that depending on how you want to um, set it up. Now TNT is generally under redstone. Uh, I was trying to get the actual redstone to connect to it, however, I wasn't able to figure out that in the time, so I'm just going to uncheck the connect to redstone, we don't really need that right now. Uh, we want the material to be TNT, uh, that will just uh, give some TNT properties to it. Uh, tick rate I've set to 20, but um, you can set that pretty much to anything, it won't really apply too much anymore. Uh, the tool I've set to an axe. I generally have things on axes. It's I, I'm not sure what kind of tool it requires. I think it's just a hand so to destroy it. So it's not that important, and it's not affected by silk touch. Doesn't drop itself. So it basically drops itself. It only one of it. So that's fine. And uh, sound on step. I've used plant because there wasn't TNT. I think plant is the closest thing to TNT, so we might be able to use that. Uh, it doesn't have a glowing effect, and it's not unbreakable. That wouldn't be good. Uh, we don't want to walk through the block because it's its solid form, and the harvest level is set to zero. Uh, we don't have any particle effects enabled for the default block because there isn't in vanilla Minecraft. Uh, we didn't need to set a GUI or um, inventory for it, so that's fine. Uh, however, I did have to configure a right-click event, so we're going to open that up, and I'm going to explain how everything works here. So using an if statement, we have basically tested for 
two things. Um, let's see if I can't expand this just a little bit so it's easier to see. So we've tested for two things. Uh, the first thing that we're testing for is if the player is holding a um, flint and steel to do that, uh, what we need to do is go to um, player, no, not player, entity, scroll down until we say item in the entity's main hand. We will use this as our uh, testing thing. And then we also need a Minecraft component for item and you just configure your item. And we also need a uh, operator, and then we're gonna use a equals item one, like this one. So once you have all that set up, uh, you wanna test for a fire charge as well as a flint and steel. So what's basically going on here is we're uh, playing the entity TNT primed sound immediately after we're removing the block at the current location and we're spawning a um, TNT prime. This might need to be set after we've made the entity itself. So we're basically spawning the entity, but it's important to note that um, to center it, we need to offset the X, Y, and Z coordinates to uh, 0.5. Uh, that's basically by default when you're spawning an entity it will offset it by uh, that dimension and it'll be kind of half on the block half off the block so we need to set this to 0 0.5 coordinates and then it'll be centered and um, for the fire charge the only thing that we need to do is we basically just need to uh, remove the fire charge uh, remove one fire charge from the player's inventory so that's basically the only thing that's going on in this particular thing. Um, again, you can pause it and uh, copy the settings if you want. Uh, another thing that you might want to do is uh, set this to 0.5. Uh, sometimes the audio is a little bit too loud and I've noticed that 0.5 is uh, pretty much the same settings that Minecraft uses. So if you want to set it to 0.5, that might work as well. So we're just going to uh, save this and we're also going to move on next and we don't need to set any generation settings and just save. So once you have that set up, we need to set up the actual timer. So I'm gonna explain how this all works. Uh, this is just a regular procedure. Uh, to create a procedure, all you need to do is go to the plus icon, go down to procedure and then you're going to type your name or your procedure. I called mine timers. And uh, for to make a basic timer, what you need to do is have it on, on world tick update. So that will be located right, on, right here on world tick update. Uh, we want to set the global timer to add uh, 0 0.05. So to do that, what we need to do is go to variables, set, global variable, then we need to go to math operators. We need to grab one of those. And we also need to go back to math operators, grab a number. We need to set this to 0 0.05. That will be perfect for calculating every second or every um, tick per second for a world uh, tick update. And the next thing that we need to do is go back to global or custom variables and we need to get global uh, our global variable and then we're just going to add that there and what this will do is it'll add every tick update so every world tick update it's going to add a um, basically a, this value to the timer variable in the session so that's basically how that works and from there we're just creating a if statement testing for if the global variable is equal or greater than 1.1. Um, and if that's true, then we're going to set the global variable to zero again, and then it'll create an infinite loop. So that's how the timer basically works. Uh, I did a tutorial on how to do, create a tutorial or create a um, timer previously. I'll link down to the video for that. Uh, we already covered the right click, so th the next thing that we need to uh, probably work on is making sure that the um, block, when it explodes or explosion destroys the block for the 
actual bomb. Uh, there was a procedure I missed in here under when block destroyed by explosion. It's right here. So what we'll do is we need to remove the block and spawn the entity. Um, we need to actually offset these. So we're going to add a math operator. We're going to put the X there. We're going to Actually, we're not going to put the X in just yet. We're going to just use 0 0.5. And we're going to duplicate this three times without the coordinates in. And then we're going to put the coordinates in like that. And then we're going to drag them into the proper places like so. So once you have that set up, it will be good to go. And just save. So that was the bomb on destroyed by explosion. Uh, now we need to create the entity model. Um, now you probably want to do this uh, before you add the procedures for the right click and um, destroy by explosion because you need to add the spawning properties for the entity. So this would probably be the next thing that you need to create before you made the procedures. So we're going to uh, give the entity a name. Uh, I call this prime bomb. This is the entity's name. Uh, I needed to select the model, so uh, your custom models will be at the bottom here. I needed to select the texture. If your texture doesn't show up uh, when you imported it, what you, you can do is you can import uh, from computer, and then you can select your texture and then just select it from the drop-down list. All these other settings are pretty much fine. I've disabled the egg color because we don't really want um, eggs to be shown. Um, so we're just going to disable that and move on to the next. I've set it to mob, uh, undefined. I've also set the max health to 1000. It's the highest it can go for the actual health and I've set the experience to zero. So um, movement on attack speed, I've just left the default settings. So 0 0.3 and a three. And I've done my best to uh, make it immune to pretty much all damage variants. Uh, so um, fire, arrow, fall damage, cactus, drowning, lightning, potions, and direct attack by players. Hopefully there will be suffocation um, added in the future. Um, this is actually one of the problems with this particular layout. Uh, for the drops, we don't want anything to drop with it, nor do we want it writable. And we can't really disable the generic uh, textures, so I just basically added the um, generic extinguish fire sound. And uh, that's good, so we'll move on. Spawn particles, I've actually added smoke uh, to the particle. Um, however, I don't think uh, it's offsetting in the right location, so I'm just going to disable that. Um, because how the entity is set up, it needs to be offset by 0 0.5 on every coordinate in order, or except for Y. So it kind of offsets it a little bit. So I'm just going to disable that. It's not needed, uh, honestly. So we're just going to move on. Uh, on mob update tick, this is uh, the only procedure that is required. And this is a little bit of a busy one. I'm going to explain it as best as I can. So we're just going to expand that a little bit. Zoom in. So the first thing that we're testing for, uh, we have an if statement and uh, it has a regular if and a if else. And what's happening here is it's testing if entity timer. So we needed uh, to use NBT data. Uh, this is built into entities, so you don't need to worry about um, checking any boxes or settings like that. Uh, you just need to make sure that your um, tag for your uh, variable, your MBT, is all the same consistently through um, all the times that you're testing for it. I've called mine entity timer. So we're going to be getting the entity timer data and we're going to check if it's less or equal than four. And that's basically going to count down four seconds and when we get to the global timer. So if it's 
less than four seconds, what we're going to do is we're going to get global timer um, is uh, equal or greater than one. And what we actually, it should be technically uh, 0 0.60, 0. maybe, no, it's milliseconds. So yeah, we want one. Uh, so if it's equal or greater than one, um, then we're going to uh, basically set the entity timer to plus one, like we've done with the actual timer in the um, the timers um, procedure that we discussed. So basically we're just setting the entity timer NBT uh, and getting the NBT number and then adding uh, one number to it. So that will count up to four. And if it's greater than four, then what it will do is it will run all this procedures. I'll explain how that all works right now. So the first thing that it's gonna do is play the sound at the current location. I have the level of the sound or the, the volume to 0 0.5 and I have a generic or entity generic explode. So this is what TNT uses. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is add some particle effects uh, to make it more realistic. So I've uh, spawned five um, uh, normal explosions and it has a area of six on the coordinates so it has a basically a cube of six blocks each and the other one is three particles with a large and two particles of huge that seems to look pretty good the next thing that we need to do is actually uh, explode the entity at the current location with the power of four that's what de default TNT is um, set to is uh, power of four and then we need to make sure that we set the um, NBT tag to zero for the value, and that will basically make sure that it doesn't store the, va uh, the value later if uh, the TNT is added again. And then we, if the entity still seems to survive all that, then what we need to do is make sure that it gets despawned. So that's just an extra precaution. So that's basically what's going on there. So we're just gonna save that, click next. Uh, the AI is enabled, but we have removed all of the AI tasks. So it's just an empty solid block um, with no AI pretty much. So once we've cleared out all the tasks and stuff like that, what we can do is click next. Spawning properties, we want to disable that. This would be checked by default and we're just gonna disable that right away and we're going to click next and it's going to generate now this is the procedure that uh, has for the actual entity we've already covered that just now so we don't need to worry about it uh, now what we're going to do is hop in game and i'm going to show you how it all works okay so now we're in game as you can see this is my test world i've done some explosions around here um, or was it over here? Or was it over here? I don't know. Somewhere around here, I've played around with the TNT. However, we're just going to uh, grab the block from the redstone tab. So this is the actual bomb. Uh, we also need flint and steel or fire charges, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go to uh, flint and steel. And we're just going to uh, place this down right here. We're gonna right click on it with the flint and steel and it spawns the uh, entity itself. And I'm not sure if this actually, yep. There might be some ghost blocks around here or there might be some ghost blocks. Yeah, there's one right there. Yeah, you can kind of see that this block wasn't destroyed somewhere in here. If we place down some fire or something like that, you can see that it just spawns back. Um, but sometimes there's some ghost blocks when there's explosions. Um, now you can actually use these to do some pretty cool things. Um, for example, if we place a line of them and say, You can kind of see that they 
act just like regular TNT. They kind of fly all over the place. Uh, that's because they're entity, um, basically entities itself. So um, you wouldn't get that with a regular block. Uh, it needs to be a block or a, a basically an entity in order to do all that. Um, but other than that, um, hopefully you guys found this video interesting. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.